Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This call is being recorded. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. As always, this is a day to praise the Lord. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. I thank the Lord and I praise the Lord for all of his blessings and all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he's about to do. This is the day, yes, that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In the background, you hear Sister Sandra singing, God's going to make a miracle and I believe that each and every day of our lives when we get up, God is making a miracle. Simple miracle in our lives. And I thank him and praise him for all of his miracles. He, if you don't understand what his miracles are, he woke you up this morning. He clothed you in your right mind. He gave you a reasonable portion of health and strength. Uh, I believe that's a miracle. Uh, when you realize that you got breath in your lungs and and your heart is beating blood and pumping blood throughout your body uh, that's a miracle so God is making a miracle in our lives and I'm just just so happy this morning let us go now to the Lord in prayer dear Lord we thank you and we praise you that you are a miracle working God we thank you Lord that nothing is impossible for you and you can do anything. And Lord, we just thank you that, that you are God that sticks right here with us, that you're closer to us than any brother. When our mothers and fathers forsake us, Lord, your word tells us that you would pick us up. Oh, Lord, we thank you this day for being that kind of God. Because of who you are, Lord, we praise you. Because of who you are, Lord, we give you honor and glory. We ask you now, Lord, as we get ready to study your word in Sunday school, that you anoint afresh. Anoint, God, that we might be hearers of your word and doers of your word. Anoint afresh, dear Lord, that this technology of Facebook Live and conference call recordings, that all that stuff works according to your will, dear Lord, anoint afresh, that nothing technical occurs that would stop us from uh, getting your word out, getting your good news about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, out to the world. Now, Lord, we just ask you to bless us. Your word says in the psalmist, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, O oh God, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God my strength, and my Redeemer who lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Hallelujah. The trumpet for civil rights. This is the day that he was born. And we celebrate his birthday on this day. And tomorrow, Monday, we have a formal celebration uh, of his birthday. People will have um, those uh, lunches and breakfasts and big, big speakers coming out to talk and to speak what thus says the Lord on that day as we celebrate this man who walked in love and who walked in peace and tried to lead this nation to an understanding that we need to work together as people. Hallelujah. His dream that he had is still relevant today. It is probably as relevant today as it was in 1968, before his assassination, 
that we all need to come together in love. And we all need to learn how to not let hate take over us. Hallelujah. Well, today we're going to go into our Sunday school lesson at this time. And, and um, I'm going to take my time with the Sunday school lesson. Um, normally, I'd be, I'll try to do about 30 minutes. I don't know if I could actually do this psalm in 30 minutes because it has so much in it. So we, we're going to, to walk it as Psalm 65, Psalm 65. Uh, to start this psalm off as an introduction, I have to go back to my childhood. Um, in my childhood, my grandmother and grandfather, we call my grandmother Little Mama, and my grandfather we call Granddaddy, or call him Granddaddy Scrap. And I was even fortunate enough to see my great-grandmother, uh, Ella Holmes, who we call Big Mama. And they would plant every year a garden. And when they planted the garden every year, um, they would uh, take the, the dirt and they would turn it over. And uh, after they turned the dirt over, um, they would put um, uh, a rose. And after they made the rose, then they would plant the seeds. And as a little child, I would be out there watching them and, and seeing the things that they did. And, and then after they got through planting the rose and, and planting the seeds, uh, they would say a prayer. They would say some words and declare that this harvest was going to be awesome. And then later on in the year, uh, as time went on, those little seeds grew up and those little seeds became little sprouts of plants. And then the plants b became bigger plants and start producing fruit. I learned early on in my life that, that if you plant a seed, oh, hallelujah, it'll produce a fruit or it'll produce a vegetable. And then when harvest season came, uh, we would take the greens and the collard greens, the turnip greens, the peas and the snap peas and we would sit around and snap peas and pick greens and, and then they had pear trees and peach trees and apple trees in the yard that had been planted for years and we would do pear preserves and apple preserves and, and peach preserves and I couldn't wait for the peach cobbler. I couldn't wait for the apple pie because I knew it was going to be good. And, and that that was their method of of showing me, I guess, as a child, they probably weren't doing it intentionally, but as a child, that showed me that that there's some that 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 plant and uh, a seed, and then some come along and water it. But God always gives the increase. And so today, as we look at this psalm that we're going to be looking at, it, it, it is a psalm about praising God, the Provider, because. Uh, nobody, no, no, no person on this earth can make a plant grow. That's something that God does. You, you can put as much water, no much fertilizer on it, but, but the actual mechanism for, for, for a plant to grow is, is, is provided by God. It's provided by God. And as a preacher and as a pastor, I've learned that, 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 that all I can do is plant a seed into someone's life and somebody else is going to come by and water it. And, and, and but God is the one that, that increases that seed in someone's life. And, and when God increases that seed, he, he lets the sun shine on it in the daytime. And even the moonlight at night has something to do with the growth process that's going on. And so this Psalm, this Psalm is all about praising God for, for, for all that he has provided. And so when we look at this psalm, and I'm taking my time with it, I'm, I'm going to read the psalm, but I'm going to read it in part because it's a pretty, it ain't a long psalm, but I don't want to just get you caught up in listening to me reading the whole psalm without having a point around it. Psalm, so psalm, psalm, psalm 65, verses 1 through 13 is what we're going to be dealing with. 
and, and the key verse, the key verse is verse 5. The key verse is verse 5, and I'm going to read it from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, by awesome deeds and righteousness, you will answer us, O God, O God of our salvation. You who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far off seas. Uh, uh, this, 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 this uh, uh, key verse, uh, this key verse is telling us God is awesome. He answers our prayers and, and does what is right. Yes, God, God does amazing things to save us, even people all over the world in far and far away countries uh, that know that God can be trusted. Oh, hallelujah. You had to catch that one. I'm going to say that one again. Uh, people, even people all over the world and in far, far away countries know that God can be trusted. And so with that in mind, with that in mind, we, when we look at this lesson today, when we look at this lesson, we're going to, to go into some learning facts. We're going to understand how the earth is a testimony of God's provision. The biblical principles that we want to grab a hold to in this lesson is to feel gratitude for the ways God meets our physical needs. And I'm going to say our physical as well as our spiritual needs. And then the daily application that we want to walk away from this lesson is to offer worship that praises God as our provider. And through good stewardship of our material blessings as well as our spiritual blessings. That's, we, that's what we're going to talk about. So, so those who are joining us rather late on, on Facebook, uh, we're in Psalm 65. And so let's read the first two verses of Psalm 65. Oh, oh, let, hold on, hold on. He says, don't, don't go to read the verses. For, uh, raise the question. This is the question. This is the question that we're going to center on in, in, in this lesson. Can I really trust God and praise him? I'm, I'm going to repeat that again. Can I really, I mean, really trust God and praise him? That's the question that we're going to answer while we look at this text. And I've already said it to you that, 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 that God can be trusted. Uh, so, but I want you to really, really ask yourself that the question yourself, can I really trust God and then praise him? Cause see that that's, they, they're tied together. If, if you don't, if you don't have praise for God, well, maybe you got a trust issue with God. If you're not praising God, may, maybe maybe you feel like people who walk around and say, if, if, if God is so good and God is so great, why does he let bad things happen to good people? Oh, mercy, God. Oh, why does he let bad things happen to good people? Why did he take my child? Why did he take my mother, my grandmother? Why did he let... My friends go through all that they're going through. Why did he let me go through all of that? Well, those are very, very hard questions to answer. But the simple solution to those problems, the simple solution to those questions is to just trust God. And trust God and give him praise. No matter what's going on in your life. Because God got stuff going on that you don't have any idea about. And we need to recognize and realize that, that God, he doesn't go around killing this person or killing that person or doing bad to this person. He knows that there's evil in this world. And evil runs rapid. And evil runs so rampant that there are problems that occur just because evil is still here. But he already gave us the solution for evil. He told us that, 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 that he's going to take evil out of our very presence when we all get to heaven one day. So you got to understand what we're going through right now is just the journey. This earth is not our home. We are just pilgrims in this barren land. We're headed somewhere. We're headed to a place 
where God will take the very presence of sin and evil away from us. Because up there where he is, there will be no crying. There will be no dying. There will be no sadness or tears. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The very presence of sin will no longer be an issue. So the question still is, can I really trust God and praise him? So the first, the first point of this lesson is praise God for his supernatural presence. Praise God for his supernatural presence. Um, that's found in verses six, uh, chapter, uh, excuse me, Psalm 65, verses 1 and 2. Listen to it from 1st the King James Version. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. And to you the vows shall be performed. O you who hear prayers, to all, to you all flesh will come. Okay, that, that, that's how the King James, the New King James Version reads. Now listen to it from the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, oh, this is a Psalm of David. It says, silence is, press, it, silence is praise to you. Zion dwelling God and also obedience. You hear the prayer in you hear the prayer in it all. We all arrive at your doorstep sooner or later loaded with guilt. Oh, mercy, mercy. I'm going to come back to all of these, but I just want to go through each one of them that I got here. Now I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. What mighty praise, O oh God, belongs to you in Zion. We will fulfill our vows to you. For you answer our prayers. All of us must come to you. Now, 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 y'all know I could stop right there, but but I'm going on. I'm going to read it from 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 the from the Amplified Bible. To you, to you belong silence, submissive wonder of reverence, which bursts forth into praise, and praise is due and fitting to you, O God. In Zion, and to you shall the vow be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. Oh hallelujah! Oh hallelujah! So what 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 is all of this saying in verses one and two? It's saying that praise praise God. For his supernatural presence, God is everywhere. The psalmist says over in 139, you know, where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee? God's presence is everywhere. And, and we must understand his presence is everywhere. Everybody got to come to God sooner or later. Uh, I'd rather you come sooner than later. You, you got to come to God. And when you come to God, don't be coming to God with all of this crying, moaning, and howling, and, and, and complaining all the time. Sometimes you just got to get in his presence in silence. That's because when you come to him in silence, you are telling him that I trust you, God. I know my situation don't look good, God. But ain't no words I can say right now. I, I know the circumstances are, are, are not like I want them to be, God. Matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm in trouble right now, God. I, I, but I know you are present help in a time of trouble. And so he says, I, what, what are, we, 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 the message Bible says, silence. It's praise to you. Coming to you with the confidence that, that I'm going to be in your presence. Now, let me, let me say something about this psalm. This psalm. This psalm is a psalm that they typically sung during a, 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 a couple of the feasts at, at that time. The, the feasts that they usually dealt with were, were uh, let me see if I got my notes here. 
the feast of unleavened bread in the spring or the feast of tabernacles in the fall. And they would come to God at this time. And they would come to worship him in Zion. And Zion, Zion is, is the hill uh, uh, in Jerusalem where the people came to worship. And when they first entered in, they entered into Zion with reverence, with silence. Now, 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 let me let me bring it into to our modern day. That's why when 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 the Urshas, you know them ones that they're just like, ooh, boy, they ain't never got no smile on their face. And they be looking at you when you walk into the place. Now, I got a problem with that, 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 that attitude. But but the point that they were trying to make, because their tradition taught them when you came into the sanctuary. You didn't come into the sanctuary of God with, with irreverence. You came in reverencing him in silence. You came in walking with, with, a, with a sense of the fact that, that you're in the presence of God in corporate worship. So you wasn't coming in gossiping. You wasn't coming in talking about how good your shoes look and how good that person's tie look and how good that woman's dress and her wig and her weave look. No, no, you came into the sanctuary ready to worship. Ready to give God all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. And I know our tradition today, we don't, we don't come into no church referencing God like that. Pastors or someone have to get up and do a call to worship. You had to call you a call to worship so everybody could be quiet and get into a worship mind. But 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 back here, when they entered into the temple, when they entered into the, the outer court and then into the inner court, they came in with a mind of worship. And it says that it, it oh God, what mighty praise, oh God belongs to you and we will fulfill our vows to you what was these vows they were filling they were vowing that they would praise and worship him they were vowing that they would bring their offerings from their harvest they 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 kept their word they they, they understood that 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 they were supposed to give and that they had to give and they, they needed to give. They had already vowed to give. Nobody made them do it. They vowed themselves that they would give their tithes and their offerings. Oh, today we have to spend 15, 20 minutes in worship service trying to get folks to give. That ain't what worship supposed to be about. You already supposed to be made up your mind when you got up that morning. Matter of fact, you supposed to made up your mind a week, two, four months in advance. When I come into worship on this Sunday, I get paid this day. I, my harvest is coming in this day. And when my harvest come in, I'm already going to give God a, 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 a tenth of it. But I'm going to put an offering on it because I know I reap what I sow. If I sow sparingly, I'm going to reap sparingly. If I sow bountifully, I'm going to reap bountifully. And he's going to give it back to me. Press down, shaking together and running over. Uh -uh. The point that I'm trying to make here. When you praise God for his supernatural presence, just being where you are, recognizing who he is, that, that's an awesome thing to do. So praise God for his supernatural presence. Trust God for his supernatural presence. Because he told you he'll never leave you. He told us he'll never leave us. Nor forsake us. The second point. The second point. Can, can I really trust God and praise him? Is praise God for his supernatural provisions. His supernatural provisions. You, you praise. You recognize his presence. His supernatural presence. Now we want to praise him for his supernatural provisions. That starts with verse 3 all the way down to verse 5. Listen to verse 3 starting at, uh, I mean, uh, Psalm 65, 
starting at verse 3. Listen to it from the New Living Translation. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. What joy, what joy for those who choose to bring near, those who live in your holy court, Oh, let me say, he said, read that again. Verse four, what joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts, what festives, festivities await us inside your holy temple. You, you answer our prayers with awesome deeds. Our, our God, Oh God, our Savior, you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. Oh, glory to God, that New Living Translation. I want you to hear this. This, this text is telling us, this text is telling us that, that, that God has some supernatural provisions for us. What is the supernatural provisions for us? He forgives all of our sins. He forgives all of our iniquities. He forgives us. That is a supernatural provision from God. If you have learned, if you have grabbed a hold of the fact that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you have invested your faith in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You have trusted him for your salvation. You can say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Jesus has saved my soul. Jesus has made me whole. He has forgiven me of all of my sins and shortcomings. And then when you have the sense enough to know that even as a Christian, even as a person who follows Jesus Christ and believes in him, that you're going to still fall short of the glory of God. You're not one of these people that walk around thinking that now that you're saved, you live above sin. Only way you're going to live above sin, if we're in a two-story apartment, I'm on the bottom floor and you on the top. Because that's the only way you're going to live above sin. But you ain't living above sin because you still got sin in you. Paul said, when I would do right, evil was always around me. That which I would do, I do not. That which I would not do, I do. Oh, wretched man am I. Who can save me? Oh, thanks be to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have to learn what 1 John chapter 1 says that if you say you don't have any sins, you're making God a liar. You have to learn what that ninth verse in 1 John 1 says. That if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and then cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And so... That's what this atonement means in, in, in the way that it's written in the, in the King James Version. He covers our sins. He forgives us. And not only does he cover our sins and forgive us, he also purges us of our sins. And, and purge means to get rid of something, to dump something, to eliminate something. That's what God does. This is his supernatural provisions. And these supernatural provisions that I'm talking about right now are spiritual. They're supernatural and spiritual. When God forgives us, when God gives us atonement, provides atonement for our sins, when God purges us of all unrighteousness, Oh, I like the old, old prayer. Lord, if you see anything in me that ain't right, oh God. 
<laughs> Take it out right now. Yes. That's how the old saints used to pray. Because they realized that there's stuff inside of us that God needs to remove. I don't know about you. I got some stuff still in me. I've been preaching since 1990, but I still got some growing to do. God still has some uh, 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 trimming to do in me because he says he takes uh, uh, his his vines and, and, and he's a good husband. And, and as long as I'm abiding in him and, and he's abiding in me, I can ask him for anything. But then he has to come by every now and then and clip off some branches and clip off some leaves in me. He has to go inside me and take do some surgery into my heart because I got some stuff that he's still working on. Oh, I'm not perfected yet, but he's still working on me. And I don't know if you understand, he's still working on you too. This is his supernatural provisions. And that verse four says something so awesome. He says, the, the Amplified Bible says it like this. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man whom you choose and calls to come near. That he may dwell in your courts. And we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. Over in Psalms 27, I believe it is, the psalmist says, One thing that I desire, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's that one thing. God, let me come near to you. Let me dwell in your house. Let me rest in your presence. Let me be in your presence forever and ever. That's how Psalms 23 ends. That I might dwell in your house, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. That's why I, our hope is not on what's going on in this earth. And, 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 and that's the thing that, 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 that messes up people's mind and think when they go, well, 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 well can I really trust God? <laughs> So many bad things happen to good people because all you've heard is people tell you if you come to God, all, all of these great things are going to happen to you on this side of the Jordan. Yes, there are blessings after blessings after blessings. You will be happy. You will be fortunate. You might even be envied on this side, but do not take your blessings for meaning that you didn't did something right. God blesses us that we might be a blessing. We are blessed to bless. And then when we see someone that is not being blessed at that time, they're going through a time of trouble. They're going through a time of tribulation. Don't look down your nose at them. Don't treat them as if God is punishing them. Tell them, God will make a way out of no way. And don't be lying to them talking about you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You better tell them the truth. Give them your transparent testimony. I, I, it was amazing grace that saved the rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. It had been times when all I had was peanut butter and crackers. It's times I spit behind bars. It's time I spent homeless. It was time I was so sick that it seemed like I was never going to get well. It's been times where I've lost my mind, didn't know which way was up. Even down looked like it was up. But God made a way out of no way. And you can encourage them that he'll make a way for you. You are blessed because he's chosen to be a blessing to you. Oh, hallelujah. So let me get to my last point. I've talked about praising God for his supernatural presence. I've talked about praising God for his supernatural provisions. 
His presence is where you could be with him. His provisions is the salvation, your forgiveness. Those are supernatural things that God has provided for us. And then finally, can I really trust God and praise him? Praise God for his supernatural performance. <laughs> you say, wait a minute. God ain't on stage. Yes, God is. God's on stage each and every day of our lives. And he is orchestrating. He is conducting. He is performing. And he gives the greatest performance ever. This is how we say it in our colloquial terms. God when play. Come on, God. Show up and show out. Because when God shows up, he shows out. And so when we read verses 6 to 13 of Psalm 65, it is describing how God shows up and shows out. He has his super supernatural performance oh which way i'm supposed to go lord he says he says read it read it from the king king james new king james new king james listen 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 to how god shows up and shows out he says uh, he establishes the mountains uh, by his strength uh, he brings being clothed with power to those to you who steals the noise of the seas and the noise of the waves and, and all the tremont of the people, that they also who dwell in the farthest parts are afraid of your signs. You make the outgoings of the morning and the evening rejoice. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furloughs. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness and your past drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flock. The valleys are covered with grain. They shout for joy and they sing oh if I just I don't have to just preach this right now you need to understand it is God that put the sun in the sky it is God that puts the moon in the sky at night when the sun rises in the east that sets in the west that's God showing off his ability to control the planets when God lets it rain on the hard ground after man has till the ground. God lets it rain on that hard ground. And that hard, it rain, he, he softens the ground with. Not only does he soften the ground, but he lets those seeds that are in the ground fill that rainwater and he makes them grow. Then on the mountain, he crowns the mountains. The mountains are crowned with snow-capped mountains in the wintertime. Those snow-capped mountains that he crowned later on when the snow melts off of those crowns on the mountain top the, 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 the valley and all the mountain sides are filled with wild flowers and beautiful lilies yes there are lilies in the valley yes God is the one that created those beautiful things not only that but he lets the, the animals the, the sheep and all of the animals just float around in the wilderness. That's God's doing. Man didn't do that. Did man had nothing to do with that. That's the, what God does when he conducts our day-to-day -day lives. He gives us a performance. And if you want to make that performance more personal, look at your body. You got blood running through your veins that then go to your extremities 
and then come back to your heart. Goes to your heart and your lungs for cleansing. You eat food and the nutrients go down into your stomach. The nutrients are then sent to your kidneys and your pancreas. And then goes down to your digestive system. Oh, God takes when you drink water and it goes down into you and he automatically sends it to your kidneys and then to your bladder. All these are extremely beautiful organizations of orchestration that God does with inside of us. He's performing and having a supernatural performance. Every time you breathe, every time you talk, every time you see, every time you hear. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. If the earth, the birds of the air, the hills and the mountains, the stars and the planets can give God praise. As it says at the end of this text, the valleys are also covered with grain and they shout for joy and they sing. Why can't we trust God? Why can't we praise the Lord and sing? Can I really trust God and praise him? Oh, oh yes, you can. Can I really trust God and give him all the praise? The earth trusts him. The crops trust him. The rain trusts him. The water trusts him. He speaks to the water as Jesus did that day. And could say to the water, peace, be still. And the water was still. If God has the power to speak to the raging sea and say, peace, be still. He can speak to you. He can speak to your storms. And he can tell you, be still, peace, be still. Since they trust him and they got confidence in him, we should trust him and have confidence in him and praise his holy name. They shout for joy, the earth and all that is in it. They also sing and so should we. We should honor the Lord with all our hearts full of thanksgiving. By singing praises of joy to him. Because he is our provider. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And if you need salvation, he's right there. If you need to be saved, he is right there. Waiting on you to give your life to him. He's waiting on you. He's waiting for you to call his name. And so, at this time, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation for all those that are listening. At this point in time, if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, I come right now confessing Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that he died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. Please, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Please, Lord, I invite you into my heart right now to be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. Find you a local body of believers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. And then teaches the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And tell them you believe in Jesus Christ and that you want to have fellowship with them. And they will tell you 
the things you have to do after you are saved. Hallelujah. One of those things is baptism. The other one is taking communion. You do those things after you are saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody on Facebook, remember these words. God can be trusted. And we must praise his holy name. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters on Facebook. And as always, be a blessing.